Hi, guys. Okay, so let's look at the chapter 14, which is the acid-base chapter in the introductory chemistry book by Tro, and this is available on the library text website. So we're going to be doing the exercise problems in this video. Okay, so here we are looking at the problem 14.4.1, and we're being asked to identify the Bronsted glory acids and bases. So remember that, yes, the Arrhenius view was Arrhenius, A-R-H-E-N-N-I-U-S. Arrhenius is, said that the acids are those that give the hydrogen ions. And hydrogen ions are also called the protons, okay, proton donors. And they are also, you know, they, they, they give away the protons, okay. But the bases, bases are those that liberate OH ions. And they also um, give electrons. So their proton donors are the acid and electron donors are the bases. So in other words, acids will accept electrons and the bases will accept protons then, okay? So that's like the opposite of that. So, um, so here in this equation, identify the bronsted lori acid. Bronsted went ahead further. He said that, fine. The OH ion is fine, that, that's a different story, but especially regarding the hydrogen ion. So he said that, the hydrogen ion that is given by an acid is taken by water in the reaction. Okay, so let's put this, show, show you how this happens. So here is this water and water molecule. And knowing that water is a polar molecule, oxygen delta negative, hydrogen's delta positive, right? And so this lone pair is given to this hydrogen. And what do we have here? we have the hydronium ion. And hydronium ion has this other hydrogen very weakly attached to the oxygen. And oxygen will have a delta positive charge. So this is H3O+. And this is called the hydronium ion. So in this reaction, knowing this theory, now in this reaction, we see that these two hydrogens, one hydrogen is liberated at one time. So here we have, um, in this case, um, H3, H, H, H2, identify the bronsted lori as So H2, PO4, minus one is going to liberate those hydrogens, two of them, but one at a time. So this is definitely acting as the acid. And where is that hydrogen going to go? To the base. And water, although is neutral, but water acts as a base. Water can be like it's an amphoteric. So H2O is the base, the Bronsted base. So as you can see, when water gets the hydrogen from the H3PO4, it forms the hydronium ion. And this hydronium ion is this. Okay. So it's always one hydrogen ion is liberated at one time. Okay. Next is, which of the following compounds is bronsted lori base? Now remember, bronsted lori base is proton acceptor, and it is also the electron electron donor. So remember that electron donors are what? Whenever there is something has a lone pair of electrons. So remember here, water is acting as the electron donor, electron donor. Okay. And hydrogen plus is what? It is the proton donor. So that is a proton, hydrogen ion. Okay, so here we see in this case, HCl, HCl. So remember, first of all, it's it's very interesting. All these hydrogens you see, um, the hydrogens in front, the hydrogen in front, you know, these, these are definitely acids. So, so it will act as an acid. Now, um, NH4 with plus one charge will also be an acid because here the hydrogen got tied, the like the no, lone pair got tied up. Similarly, in this case, this also will act as an acid, NH3. So oh, first of all, let's try to understand this card. HCl, HCl is going to give you hydrogen ion and chloride ion, okay? So this is a, which of the following is a base, but this is acting as an acid. So this is the bronsted lori acid. So I'm going to just put here bronsted lori acid okay so it is giving the this is how it's disintegrating this guy hold on to this one next look at this one h3po4 how is it going to get yeah fine it gives you three hydrogen ions and 
these are given in three steps and PO4. So I'm going to just put it like, you know, minus three phosphate. So this is also acting as a Bronsted lowry acid. Okay. Now, next is the ammonium. So how did that happen? Here you had, how did, how did, how did, how did ammonia form, uh, like ammonium ion form? So here is this hydrogens attached to nitrogens, right? This nitrogen and nitrogen has a lone pair. Remember, and here is some hydrogen, you know, in some area, some way. So here you see, in this case, uh, like ammonium ion, let's say ammonia with water. So here, water and water. So water, um, or rather, sorry, do it this way. Hydrogen here, oxygen here, and oxygen here. Uh, hydrogen here, sorry. So here we have negative. This is delta positive, delta positive. So what's happening? This guy gives its lone pair to this hydrogen, and this one is liberated. This is this this bond gets broken. So what is formed? You will see here hydrogens, 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 and you have nitrogen. And now with the plus one charge, because it is now attached to this hydrogen. So more what hydrogen ions. And so when, you know, this hydrogen ions can be liberated. So in other words, this becomes the proton donor. This is very much a proton donor now. It can give away this hydrogen back. Okay. And you have now OH ion. So because of that, you know, ammonia, ammonia is basic in nature because in situ, it can generate a basic, you know, basic ion, which is basic in nature. So we are looking at the bronsted lowry base, which can, which is basically bronsted lowry base is proton acceptor or electron donor, which one? So obviously ammonium ion is not an electron donor. So because it's, 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 it, it has, uh, and it is not a proton accept, acceptor either. It can give a proton. But so this is not the answer. The same story is going to be with CH3, NH3 plus. Same story. So here is the CH3, hydrogens, hydrogens, and hydrogens. Here you have nitrogen. And you have in the beginning, one hydrogen here, another hydrogen here. And let me put this in a different way. One hydrogen here and another hydrogen here. And then you have these two lone pairs. Okay, and then you have water, H, sorry, H, oxygen, and hydrogen. So here what's happening. In this case, these are the two lone pairs. And, sorry, these are the two lone pairs. And you have delta negative. This is a, this is a polar bond. And so this lone pair is given to this hydrogen and this bond breaks. And so when that happens, what do we form? We have now CH3, H, 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 C, N, H, H, and hydrogen. Okay, and then plus one charge here. Okay, plus OH ions, plus OH negative. Okay, and that is obviously in situ, basic OH ions. And this is a proton plus donor. Okay, now here what's happening. In this case, we see a proton donor. Proton donor is, again, the, the ammonium. This is like, that, like the ammonium ion. So again, the CH3, NH3 with plus one charge is a proton donor. So it is not a proton acceptor. It has already given the electrons to the hydrogen ion. So this species is also. But let's look at this. This H3PO41 negative. So what does what is it going to liberate? It can liberate one hydrogen ion. So it is a proton donor. And it is going to give you PO4 minus, minus uh, three. Okay. So this is one way. So it is a bronsted lowry acid. And is it the uh, base? Is it the base? Is it the electron donor also? Will it the, will it accept the electrons? Um, it can accept and it can it will it will it donate the electrons? So uh, in other words, and it can accept the elect, uh, the protons also. So how? So look at this H P O four minus two plus one hydrogen ion, and then what do you get? You get H P O. 4 minus 1. H2, sorry, it's H, 
2 PO4 minus 1. So 2 H2 PO4 minus 1. So what do we see? We see that here it is acting, acting actually both ways. One is it's acting as a um it's acting as 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 a bronsted lowry acid it's giving away the hydrogen ion but at the same time it can also accept a hydrogen ion so it's acting both ways so this is a bronsted lowry base so it's acting both but all the others are like working as acids okay so the answer is answer is h p o 4 minus 2 can act as an acid and it can also act as a base, okay? So how is it acting as a base? When it accepts, when it's, it's able to accept hydrogen ions. And why is it acting as an acid? When it's able to donate or give away hydrogen ions. So both ways it's acting, and I have shown you this, okay? So that is the answer. Um, let's, uh, let me just put this here. This is the scenario. All right. This is the answer. Okay. Next, identify the conjugate acid base pair. Remember, conjugate acid base pair is difference of difference of one hydrogen ion. Okay, why they give or take, doesn't matter. So let's look at the scenario. N, H, 2, negative 1. It can accept one hydrogen ion. Okay, if it adds one hydrogen ion, then what does it become? It becomes NH3. Okay. And so in that case, because it's accepting a proton, it's accepting a proton. That means what does it do when it's proton acceptor? It are bases. So it is. It is uh, in that case. Um, this uh, uh, it's accepting as a base. Um, yeah. So this is this is acting as a base because it's able to accept a proton. On the other hand, look at water H two O. H two O in this case can giving that same uh, one proton. It can give away one proton, minus one proton. So then it becomes hydrogen ion, OH ion. So because it's giving that one proton, so it is acting as an acid. So for an acid, OH ion is the conjugate base. So for if water is acting as an acid, the conjugate base is OH ions. For NH2 minus one, if it's acting as a base, then ammonia is the conjugate acid of NH2. 2 minus 1. This is the conjugate base of H2O. Okay. So this is the, this is how you're going to write the conjugate acid base. So this is the conjugate base. This is the conjugate acid. This is the, uh, this is the, uh, this is acting as an acid. And this is acting as a base. All right. So that's one thing. Now, next is write the balanced equation for barium hydroxide and dilute acetic acid. So barium, barium, barium is what? Group 2A. So it will have what? Plus 2 charge. Okay, the charge is, always remember these charges, plus 2. Hydroxide, you need to remember the polyatomic ions, minus 1. Acetic acid, CH3COOH. That is the, um, you know, um, uh, that's the that's the formula for it and it's always aqueous okay barium hydroxide is soluble in water okay so this is also going to be aqueous so let's write this down b a o h all twice plus acetic acid c h 3 c o o h now this is a organic acids so remember for organic organic acids, organic acids, it's the acidic group is COOH. And the hydrogen, this hydrogen is the acidic hydrogen. This is the one that is liberated as the hydrogen ion. Okay. 
All right, so now what are we going to do here? So in other words, if you look at it, this piece is the anion and this is the hydrogen ion. So this is, that is a negatively charged piece. Now let's write this. So here barium is going to combine with the acetate because this is the anion, anion. Okay, here organic, this is written first and this is the cation part. So cation, OH and hydrogen will combine. Okay, so what is formed here? So here you're going to write down BA, CH3, COO, all twice, plus H2O. Okay, because there are two acetates, right? Acetate anions. So this whole thing becomes two. So two acetate anions and um, so let's count the number of hydrogens here. Um, so we have um, one barium, sorry, we have one barium and we have um, two oxygens and two hydrogens here. And then we have um, CH3COO is one piece, right? So that is first initially, it is just one. And then we have one hydrogen here initially, okay? And then here you have one barium and you have two CH3COO. And then you have two hydrogens and you have one oxygen, okay? So, so when you add two over there, this two, this two, so this makes this whole thing twice. So now you have two CH3COO and you have two hydrogens. So what is this? Two hydrogens plus two hydrogens is four hydrogens. Acetates are balanced. So we need to make this four hydrogen. So we put two here. So two times two is equal to four hydrogens and we have two oxygens. Okay. So now we have uh, two hydrogens here. And two hydrogen makes four hydrogens. Hydrogen's balanced. Next is we're going to look at the oxygens. Two oxygens here and two oxygens here. That's balanced. Next, we're going to look at the um, acetate. So two acetates here and two acetates. Those are balanced. And then we have barium. We have one barium on one side. We have one barium here and we have one barium here. So all that's balanced. Okay. So that is the balanced equation. Next are the problems, titration. Now here, this one is, um, there's a step to it for the titration. So always, first thing first, let's write down. Always convert the milliliters to liters, always. Next step. So this is the first step. Second step is what? Always find the moles of whatever entity, you know, you are given. So moles of the given entity is equal to, let's say the moles in this case, um, NOH. So in this case, we need to mass of the acetic acid. Okay, moles of, uh, no, that's the oxalic acid. So moles of the acid is given. And so you're going to find the moles of A. So whatever entity, acid or base. So let's put this X and Y. We don't know which, which is. So moles of X is equal to the molarity of X times the volume of X in liters. Right. So this is given to you. You you get the moles of one of the entities. So that gives you the moles of X. OK, next thing you're going to take the moles of X and you're going to multiply by the mole to mole ratio. And you have you're going to take the moles of Y on the numerator and the moles of X in the denominator. OK, so now this is going to give you the moles of Y. So. Mm, let's do this here. It's the third step. Okay, so here, this is the third step, actually. This is the third step. Okay, next, you this gives you the moles of Y. Then what do you do next? Next, you're going to take the, in this case, they are asking you to find the mass. So you take the moles of Y and then, um, if, if the volume is given, let's see, moles of Y. Now, you can find the grams of Y. 
how you're going to use the molar mass. Okay, so this is one piece. Next, if the question is asking, if the question is asking you for the molarity, is for the for the molarity, okay, molarity of y. So how do you do that? So let's see, you already should know the how to convert the grams, you know, grams using molar mass. Okay, so that's one piece. But if the question is asking you about what is a molarity or what is a volume, so in that case, you take the moles of Y and you can find the molarity of Y. How? By using the, by using the moles over the given volume of moles of Y over the volume of Y in liters. And that's going to give you the molarity of Y. Or you, if they're asking you, if they've given you the molarity and they're asking the volume, then what do you do? You take the moles of Y, divide by the molarity of Y, and that gives you the volume of Y in liters, okay? Volume of Y in liters. So all the three possibilities. One is the, one is if they're finding the grams, finding the molarity and finding the volume okay, of the other entities. So when X and this is when, you know, X and Y are, is being, are being, you know, compared, whether it's an acid or a base. So in this case, what are we going to do? We are going to take the, uh, let's do it with this kind of different color. What mass of this is an acid is present in a sample if it is titrated to its equivalence point with you're given the molarity you're given the um, uh, the volume and the molarity of a base okay <coughs> okay so what do we need here so let's do this number one number one step is milliliters so we have 18.09 milliliters 18 0.09 milliliters. Okay, convert that to liters times one liter over 1,000 milliliter, 1,000 milliliters. So this becomes 0 0.018 liters. Okay, second thing is um, find the moles. So moles of NaOH moles of NaOH, how you will do the moles of NaOH? You're going to take the uh, molarity of NaOH times the volume in liters. The molarity given is 0 0.2235 M times the volume. Volume is 0 0.01809 liters. Okay, so let's do that. Um, point 2235 0 0.2235 times 0 0.01809, 0 0.01809, okay? And you get the mol moles is equal to, so this comes out to be 0 0.004041234, okay? So just leave at least four places okay next is find the moles of the acid which is c uh, which is h2 h2 c2 o4 okay and how do you do that you're going to take the moles of the of the NaOH so take the moles of NaOH which is 0 0.004043 moles of NaOH okay NaOH times times now what do you see here times um mole to mole ratio so what what ratio do we have we have one of this and two of NaOH so you're going to do what two moles of NaOH two moles of NaOH and one mole of the acid H2C2O4 H2C2O4 so 0.004043 Divide that by two, and you get this thing as 0 0.002016 and so forth. Next is you're going to take 
the moles of um, moles of um, the acid and convert that to the grams. So moles of CH two C two O four and convert that to grams. So for that, what do we need? We need the molar mass of this. So how do we get the molar mass? So there are two hydrogens, there are two carbons, and there are four oxygens times hydrogen is one, carbon is 12, oxygen is 16. So you get here two, 12 twos are 24, and 16 fours are 64. So you take 64 plus 24 plus two, and what do you get here? 90. Let me try this again, 64 plus 24 plus two, and you get 90. So this thing is 90. 90 grams per mole. So what do you put here? 0 0.0040. For, oh, sorry, oh no, no, not this one, the other one. So it's the 0 0.002021 moles of H2C2O4 times um, 90 grams of H2C2O4 over one mole of H2C2O4. Okay, what do you get? So 90 times 0 0.002021 and you get 0 0.181. So this is 0 0.0.181. Eight grams, or in other words, 0 0.189 grams of C2. So H2C2O4. That is the answer. Okay. So this is the answer. So next problem is the problem of NOH and HCl. I have covered that much of this type of examples. So consult the lecture notes okay so the in this lecture notes you the same process exactly the same everything all steps the same except the last one we are not doing the grams to moles you know here you you need to find the molarity so you're going to use the um use the moles over the volume given volume so you are given the volume of NOH right so once you get the moles moles divided by 23.45 milliliter and that will give you the answer okay so consult the lecture notes for more specifics but let's look at this one now here they did not give you the equation okay i gave, i balanced this equation because ahead of time so here they gave you so once they, they just said so strontium hydroxide reacting with hcl so you identify the products okay next you know make sure you balance the equation and when you balance make sure that so we are now looking at a titration reaction in which we are given the volume and the molarity of the acid and we need to find the uh, base okay so here what are we doing so here first thing same thing milliliters to liters so milliliters convert that to liters so 20.0 milliliters times one liter over 1000 milliliters and this gives you 0 0.020 liters of SROH whole twice okay and then the next thing was the HCl the HCl was um, 25 okay so 25.0 milliliters times one liter over 1000 milliliters and that gives you 0 0.025 liters of HCl okay this is this is uh, one thing you have to do next thing is you are going to identify the moles of HCl so how will you do that you're given the molarity you times the volume so the molarity is 0 0.0500 m times the volume volume is 0 0.025 liters then what do you get? So 0 0.0500 times 0 0.025, 0 0.025. And what do you get here? 0 0.00125. 
these are the moles of hcl okay next you take the moles of hcl let me double check 0 0.0500 0 .0 times 0 0.05 oh, wait a minute 0 0.0500 0 0 times 0 0.025 and that is 0, 0, 0.0125 okay next is 3 next we are looking at the moles of sr oh the base okay how do you do that you're going to take the moles of the acid which is 0 0.00125 moles of hcl times the mole to mole ratio which is one mole of no sorry how many moles two moles of sr oh whole twice okay two moles of this over four moles of hcl so this part is coming from the balanced equation now um 0 0.00125 times two divide that by four and you get here this is equal to 0 0.000625 moles of sr oh whole twice Okay, so that's that's the moles of, so just double check one more time, 0 0.00125 times 2 divide by 4 is equal to 0 0.00625. Next is the last step where we got the, we need to find the molarity. So molarity is equal to moles over the volume in liters. Okay, so this is the moles of SROH whole twice over the volume in liter of sr oh whole twice right so just just put this here so the molarity of sr oh whole twice is equal to the moles 0 0.000625 moles of sr oh whole twice over over the volume. The volume is 0 0.020 liters of SROH whole twice. Okay, so divide by 0 0.020 and you get here is equal to 0 0.03125. That's the molarity. Um, yeah, so molarity is equal to 0 0.03125. Okay, now, if the question is given you, and this is for the SROH, if the question is given you in this form, yeah, standardized notation, you get that answer. Otherwise, you can, you will have to convert it into, so one, two. So you move two places to the left. Okay, so what does this answer become in a scientific notation? This becomes 3.1, and let's put two places, 3.12 into 10 to the power negative 2, M. That is the answer, okay? That is the answer for this question, and this is the, um, that's the answer. All right. So this is the, this is a very important, you know, these type of questions can come on the test because we test a lot of things. We make sure or we always, you know, we may give you to balance, make sure you balance the equations or check for balancing. It's very important. Okay. All right. Next is identify the strong acid, identify as strong acid, which one is a strong acid. Now here, I would say use table here, use table. Um, 11.3 in the handout, 11.3 in the handout. Okay. Now, first thing is first that, yes, anytime you have OH, OH is always going to be a base, you know, so this is a base. Now, how do you know this is a strong base? Because rubidium belongs to group 1A, and be becoming a group 1A, that means it's going to be soluble in water. 
solu all hydroxides are insoluble in water except group 1a and ammonium okay and barium hydroxide also so this is soluble in water so therefore rboh is a strong base this is a strong base okay now this is the nitrous nitrous acid now let us say you don't know so let's look at these acids here so this is the table right relative strengths of acids and bases so here what do you see you see like the 11.3 on one side is the acid on the other side is the conjugate base of that acid on one side you see the strength of the acid the the this is moving up so this is moving up this is all moving up. On the other side, it's coming down. It's on the other side, it's coming down from top to bottom. So what are we doing here now? Strong acids are the ones that are on the top left, strong acids. On the bottom left are the strong bases. So if you were to look at these guys, the conjugate base of these strong acids, they're always weak. And the strong bases, their conjugate acids are weak. Okay, now here you can look at the acid side. Where do you see the um, nitrous acid? So obviously among the actual strong acids, we do not see HNO2. We see HNO3, but we don't see HNO2. So keep going down. You see HNO2 is here and HNO2 falls in the category of weak. Nitrous acid falls in the category of weak acids okay means it is not going to liberate the hydrogen ions like easily so this is a weak acid and again everything is in comparison so it's a weaker acid but you can refer to the table in the handout okay next is write the balanced chemical equation for dissociation dissociation of ions so how is this going to work now calcium this could be partially soluble remember partially soluble okay remember that castro bar from the solubility table so what is it going to give you this is going to give you calcium ions group 2a all group 2a ions aqueous and plus the oh minus one charge aqueous but how many ohs are being liberated two so this is the you know this is a balanced you know equation for this reaction and this one is, you know, partially this is solid and partially soluble in water. So we can still consider it to be aqueous. So this is one thing. H2SO4. H2SO4 is first H2SO4 aqueous. First gives one hydrogen ion and then it gives you HSO4 minus one. Next is HSO4 minus one is going to give you one hydrogen ion and then it gives you SO4 minus two. So it's a two-step process in this case, okay? And here, this is aqueous, this is aqueous, this one is was aqueous, and this one is aqueous, okay? Next is, what is the hydroxide ion? You're given the molarity of the sulfuric acid. In other words, you are given from where? Here, sulfuric acid is giving the hydrogen ion. So the hydrogen ion concentration is given. Okay, and you can transfer this one, two, three, and four. So you moved it to four places. So what does this become now? This becomes 3.2 into 10 to the power negative four. Okay, so we know the rule that the Kw, the ion product of water Kw is equal to 1.0 into 10 to the power negative 14 is equal to the concentration of the OH ions and the concentration of the hydronium ions or the hydroxide. So this hydroxide is equivalent to the hydronium ions, okay? The hydronium ions. So here we are given the, this is the total should add up to 10 to the power negative 14, okay? And then we are given the OH ions and we are given the hydronium ions, which is the, hydro, uh, which is 3.2, into 10 to the power negative four. And here you have next is the 1.0 into 10 to the power negative 14, divide that by 3.2 into 10 to the power negative four. So this becomes one divide by 3.2, and that is 0 0.31 
2 into 10 to the power negative 14 minus 4 and that is equal to negative 10 okay so when this is cancelled out so negative 10 so, so let me put this here 10 to the power negative 14 plus 4 is equal to this okay when this one is solved the exponents okay but that is not the exact answer so what are we going to do now here we are going to move the decimal three point so this becomes 3.1 okay and the answer now is 3.12 into 10 to the power negative 11 and that is the molarity of the oh ions oh ions the concentration of the oh ions in the system okay so that's one thing next is what is the hydronium ion given the so same story so let's just do this 1.0 into 10 to the power negative 14 okay is equal to the oh ion negative one times the hydronium ion h3o plus the hydronium ion so here you have 1.0 into 10 to the power negative 14 is equal to the OH ions are 1.0 into 10 to the power negative 9. And then the hydronium ion we need to find H3O plus 1. And so here you have 1.0 into 10 to the power negative 14 over uh, 1.0 into 10 to the power negative 9. And so how do you solve this? This becomes 1.0 into 10 to the power negative 14 plus 9. So this becomes 1.0 into 10 to the power negative 5. And that is the H3O plus. Okay, that is the answer. So this is the answer right here. And here was the answer here. All right. Last but not the least is I'm giving you more practice on the direction of the equilibrium. Okay, so let me get a problem here, but these are the steps. The general rule is that the hydrogen ion concentrate or the hydrogen ions, the direction of the equilibrium, it is going to be moving from the strong to the weak side. Okay, and wherever the, it can be backward also. So the, so there's one moving forward and the other is moving backward like that, but the forward is pre preferred, but you know, if uh, we have to identify which side is a strong acid is the and which side is a strong like stronger side um strong it could be an acid it could be a conjugate acid also it can be acid or a conjugate acid whichever side is strong conjugate base right or um or, or a base right or a base, whichever side is strong, is going to weak, is, is going to move to uh, to the um, like here. Okay, so that is preferred. Now, always first identify the acids and the bases. If you can, just sometimes just eyeballing, you will come to know that this guy is always. So remember, OH is always going to be a base. So always a base is always OH. Wherever there's an OH sign, you see always a base. So acid sometimes that can be problematic. They may, Generally, they have a lot of hydrogen ions, but then if there are some negative charges, they can act both ways as an acid or a base. So, but, but generally, you know, so identify, so you cannot rule out anything that has OH ions. Now, here's a tricky part. Never start with water. Water can act as an acid and a base. So it can go both ways. So the nature of water, therefore, is M4, M4 teric, T E R I C, M4 teric. Okay. So let me get a problem and then we will go from there. Just give me one second. Okay. So here we are given these two reactions and we need to identify what is the direction of the equilibrium. Which side is the equilibrium flowing? Which, so we need to identify. This is the process. Number one, first always identify the acid and a base. So base is always an OH. Wherever you see OH, that's going to be a basic side. Next is, that is a base, base, I mean, that particular species. And then for the acid, if there are lots of hydrogen ions 
and you know it will act as an acid so you always have to see what is it reacting with next you're going to determine what is the conjugate acid and a conjugate base conjugate acid of is always going to be of a base and the conjugate base is the um, coming from the acid. So we will do that. Next is we're going to look at the table 11.3 in the handout. You're going to compare the acid to a conjugate acid and a base to a conjugate base and identify which one is stronger, you right? Or weaker, strong versus weak, which one? Okay, and then based on that, just place the direction of the arrow. Okay, so it's very simple, but let's do that. H2SO4 water. So sulfuric acid, we know that, that by default, this is sulfuric acid by the name itself. So yeah, this is an acid, sulfuric acid. Okay, so this is going to act as an acid. So if this is acting as an acid, then water is acting as a base. So never start with water. Always start with what you already know. So now acid will have a conjugate base. So which is the conjugate base? Conjugate base between sulfuric acid, let's see, H2SO4, if this is acting as an acid, then it is going to give away one hydrogen ion, and that's going to be now HSO4 minus one becomes the conjugate base of this sulfuric acid. So this is the conjugate base, okay? Next is water. Water is H2O. It has accepted that one elect one proton hydrogen ion, and this is now H3O plus one. And so now what do you have here? This is the this is the base. This is acting as a base. So now this is the conjugate acid. So conjugate acid. Okay. First step is that. Now you compare. Compare. Compare H2. SO4 with the conjugate acid, which is H3O plus, which one is the, which one is stronger? And you compare H2O with HSO4 negative. So an acid to a conjugate, so an acid, an acid to a conjugate acid and a base to a conjugate base. Okay, so this is the base and this is the base and these guys are the acting as the acids. H2SO4 and the hydronium ion is acting as the acid. So now what do you get here? Now, sulfuric acid, remember sulfuric acid is the H2SO4 and its conjugate base is HSO4, but it is falling in the weak category. So which one is stronger? It's the H2SO4 is the stronger. So if you compare, look, compare H2SO4, H2SO4 with HSO4. So HSO4 hydrogen sulfate ion is on the weaker side, the, on the weaker, on the base, the top to bottom, it is increasing. And on the acids from bottom to top, it is increasing acid strength. So we see that the H2SO4 is stronger than the, so, so this is stronger. H2SO4, let me put this in another color. This is stronger and hydronium ion is weak. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, oh, wait one second. I have to, I did, I made a mistake. <laughs> sorry, that, that's why sometimes, okay. Hydronium, oh, same side, yeah. Acid to an acid, no, no. So we see that, yeah. A sulfuric acid, H2SO4, needs to be compared to the hydronium ion. Okay, so what do you see? Sulfuric acid is above the hydronium ion. This means that sulfuric acid is stronger than the hydronium ion. So here you're going to do this. Sulfuric acid is stronger. And as compared, the hydronium ion is weaker. And now compare water and HSO4. Now here you see in this water is right here and HSO4 is here. So water and HSO4, water. So HSO4 is on the weaker side, right? And you see the strength is increasing when you move down, top down. So water is stronger is comparison to HSO4, negative one. So this guy is stronger. And HSO4 with one negative is weaker. So that means what is the direction? Whichever side. So this side is a stronger side. This side is, th these are stronger. This is the stronger and the side that we identified as weaker. So it will, the direction is going to be from, 
stronger. Okay. Like that. And then a little bit backward. It is still going to be. So the protons are going to be transferred from the stronger to the weaker side. So what is going to be mostly in the reaction? Stronger. So what is going to be in the reaction? Mostly what are present in the reaction? Um, if it's moving forward, so mostly products will be there. Mostly. So the concentration of the products is more than the concentration of the reactants. So mostly products in this case. Okay, next is the carbonate and the water. So what is found here? Now here you see it is, so there's no obviously OH. Remember anytime there is OH, it's always going to be, this is always a strong base. And you can see this also here. So you look at this here, the table hydroxide, strong base. You see the arrow, the arrow on the top, this, this thing here, the arrow. So the arrow is basically the strength, indicating this strength of the bases, very strong. So OH is very strong. And it's obvious if OH is strong um, base, then this base is acting as a strong. So it's always one is strong, the other is also strong. So strong acid. If you identify one, one thing, the other will always fall in place. So if this is a base, the other one will has to act as an acid. If one is a strong acid, um, the other one will be a strong base. Okay. So that's one thing. Now let's just compare. If that is strong, now just which one is the conjugate acid base pair? So here's the thing. OH negative one plus one hydrogen ion, and that gives you H2O. So this is, if this is a base, then H2O is the strong conjugate acid of OH. And the other one is the carbonate, CO3 minus two. Okay, now CO3 minus two will, um, oh, actually wait, HCO3 minus one. Okay, HCO3 minus one will give away one hydrogen ion. So that's how you get CO3 minus two. So this is acting as an acid and carbonate ion is the conjugate base, okay? So this is the conjugate base. Now, so first, first you do that, then look at the table and you identify the conjugate acid, which one is strong and which one is B. So we are going to look at the OH and HCO3 are strong. Now, uh, water, so you're going to compare, let me write this down, compare an acid to a conjugate acid. So compare, acid to conjugate acid and a base to conjugate base. Okay, an acid. An acid is what? Acid is HCO3 minus one. Strong acid, okay. To conjugate acid is H2O. So we are going to compare these two. And then a base is the OH minus and you compare it to um, conjugate base carbonate, CO3 minus two. Okay, so let's do uh, the HCO3 strong acid to water, HCO3 to water. So water, if you look at water, right here is the water, very weak acid, okay? And in comparison, you see the bicarbonate HCO3 negative, is, is stronger than the water. So water is weaker acid. So here we are going to put water is weaker. And in comparison, the bicarbonate is stronger. Okay, next is the OH is stronger. And let's look at, can we, is there carbonate there? So OH is obviously the strongest. And then the carbonate is on the top. In comparison, it is weaker. So carbonate anion, as you can see, carbonate anion, weaker in comparison to the OH. OH is the strongest. So here you see uh, stronger, and then this is comparatively weaker. Okay, so where is the direction now? So if you look at it, this side is the stronger side. So it is going to move backward. So it moves backward from the strong to the weak side, 
okay, a little bit. So the protons are going to be transferred. So it is going to move backward and the reactants are going to be mostly in this reaction. More reactants, the concentration of reactants is more than the concentration of the products. Okay, so that. So these are the, you know, um, ways you will have to do some practice on your own. And, uh, and then if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me. Okay. All right. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.